I'm thrilled to be here. I thought I'd tell you three stories about research in nanotechnology that come from my work. I should reassure you, by the way, that my talk will be nowhere near as long as, as uh, uh, Dean Giotto's introduction, so there's nothing to worry about, uh, which was a very kind thank you for the kind introduction. Now, I thought I'd tell you three stories about nanotechnology. Maybe before I do that, I'll, um, I'll say a word about uh, nanotechnology and what it is to me. So, first of all, I think many of you will know that nano refers to a billionth, a billionth of a meter. So it refers to a length scale. And uh, in fact, this morning I was speaking to a reporter from the Recorder, uh, the newspaper here, and um, uh, she asked me to try to give a sense of how small a nanometer is, or how big a nanometer is. And uh, truth be told, I'm not very good at that. I, I, I keep struggling with it, because with a micron, um, you, can say, you can say things like, I think it's something like the 70th the diameter of a human hair, or it's approximately the length of one of my hairs. Um, <laughs> with, with a nanometer, um, uh, the, best thing I, the best thing I could come up with is it was a thousandth of one of those microns. Right? But that's not all, uh, all that illustrative. I mean, another thing that's quite good to say about a nanometer is that it's the size of atoms and molecules. And that's true. And that is essential to nanotechnology. It's engineering with atoms and molecules. So that's another feature that, for me, nanotechnology certainly has. I distinguish it from nanoscience. To me, nanoscience is hugely important, hugely exciting, and relates to the discoveries that have been made in the past decade or two in understanding matter and its behavior and how it gives rise to properties. But nanotechnology, to me, is concerned with function. It's concerned with utility. It's concerned with making materials that can help us detect cancer when cancer is one cellular mutation. It's concerned with engineering molecules and atoms such that they can help us switch information, route information over the internet using light alone, without recourse to electronics. The kind of utility I'll talk to you about today also relates to harnessing the sun's power in an efficient way and even in a cost-effective way. I have absolutely no shame as a scientist, as somebody who's very excited and passionate about working at, I think, the cusp of some very difficult and interesting areas, also trying to make things that are cheap, because things that are cheap are potentially things that can be used. And when I say a few things today about some of the work we're doing towards solar energy, um, one of the main motivations for using nanotechnology is that if we can control molecules in this way, this can afford us a degree of control and cost effectiveness, that we can surmount the biggest challenge to the success of solar energy, which is not a purely technological one. It's actually a cost one, finding ways to make solar energy something that we can actually afford, that we're willing to afford. 